newspapers across the country, uh, with the exception of the Vancouver Sun, and probably 200 community local papers. And we are, I think, in terms of traffic, Canada's biggest web portal. And my job there involves, currently, my job involves reaching out through social networks to deepen our brand and deepen the engagement with the users. And I think also, this is probably not part of my job description, but something I bring to it is a combination of sensitivity to content, community, and Canadiana. Uh, and that's something that's evolved for me as I've developed as a person. It's taken me a long time to figure out what it is that I do, but I think I can pretty much <laughs> narrow it down to those three things now. And I've had a long path getting here. Uh, I, I started, I suppose, on this alternative reality path at about the age of 17 when I, I left Ontario. I, I left to represent Ontario at an international school called Pearson College in Victoria and so was exposed in, a, in this kind of crucible environment to people from all around the world and lots of different faiths and ideas and backgrounds. And I became a bit of a world traveler. Uh, I studied fine arts at Concordia University where I have a degree in photography, a uh, major in photography. I was a tree planter for six years and so very involved in a kind of alternative community that forms in a temporary way in the bush in northern Ontario uh, amid the black flies and the rain and the snow and so forth. Um, and uh, I lived for a while on a co-op in Nova Scotia, a land co-op where I built my own house uh, with the help of a friend and uh, lived there for a year and a half uh, in this sort of back to the land kind of fashion that was ultimately unsuccessful and that propelled me back to Toronto where I discovered at the age of 28 that, that the little house my dad had grown up in and which was still owned by my uncle had actually been in our family since it was built in 1888 and I set my sights on that house as my goal in life for about five years and ended up buying it from my uncles and, uh, and, and so I'm now the, the fifth generation to live there and it informs my way of living in this city to have this sense of being in a village where there are roots. I walk to work and I cycle around the city as much as I can and at the same time I have a daughter who lives in Montreal so I spend endless amounts of time going back and forth. Um, and. I'm very, very involved in the Roots Music community in Ontario. I'm, I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Ontario Council of Folk Festivals, and I was uh, a volunteer, have been a volunteer for the last seven years with the Shelter Valley Folk Festival, where I also served on the board for three years, and I am the co-founder and co-host of the Corktown Ukulele Jam, and recently I've started a venture called Roots Music Canada, which endeavors to bring together the individual communities that surround each artist and each venue and each genre of what we call roots music, which is folk, blues, bluegrass, alt country, world, anything that has this, the sense of being rooted in a, in a tradition or a sound. And we are connecting those communities via a blog that really acts almost as a media station. Uh, and so that's my latest endeavor.